side templates. So in SharePoint 2010, just as in uh, as any as in SharePoint 2007, uh, there's lots of different temp uh, site templates. Right now we're looking at a blog template, but if we click uh, Site Actions, New Site, we'll see that there's lots of different uh, groups of templates and uh, templates inside them. Uh, so in this case, we're creating a sub web. If we're going to go to uh, Central Administration, which I have opened here, um, and we're going to try to create a site um, the site collection, we'll see that we can uh, we have access to lots of uh, templates here as well. So I'm going to give a name to my uh, uh, to my site collection here, and as you can see, there is collaboration. There is a bunch of sites under collaboration, uh, as well as meetings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in this particular example, what we're going to do, we're going to create the our own um, instance of the blog template that has certain functionality and we're going to place it in our own uh, group such as collaboration. So I'm going to start with the uh, um, opening Visual Studio 2010. I'm using uh, beta 2 for this example and I'm going to create a blank uh, SharePoint project and I'm going to show you and go through the actions uh, of creating my own site template and deploying it. So again, my uh, I'm just going to be using a blank SharePoint project, and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Sample Templates, and it's going to be located in the default location. Click OK. I'm going to deploy it as the uh, as the uh, farm solution uh, right on my root site for debugging, and the project is going to be created. This is going to be a blank project. Um, with default uh, structure here, uh, packages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, there's a couple of components that I need to add, and to show you those couple of components, I'm going to go to the 14 uh, Hive, which is uh, the SharePoint home root, and I'm going to go to templates, and uh, inside 1033 XML, uh, there's a couple of files here that I'm going to be also using in my in my solution. So those files define uh, the actual group and the name of a template and we're going to have to create one of those. So there's a couple of other files that are relevant and a couple of directories. So inside my uh, site, uh, inside my template, site templates, I have several uh, templates here that you've seen as I was clicking through the through the groups and we're going to create an instance of our own here. Uh, in this case is blog and the uh, last part that we have here um, I'm gonna go through and create the templates or I'm gonna map a templates folder right into my into my solution uh, so that when the solution deploys uh, whatever was in the templates folder gets deployed to the actual to the actual home root of SharePoint so I'm gonna map uh, this particular folder to templates and I'm going to create a new folder underneath it. And uh, in my case, it's going to be 1033, as you see, according to our structure, uh, 1033 XML. So I'm going to create exactly the same structure here, 1033, and then XML is run right underneath it. Okay, so I've got that, and uh, I'm going to take one of the um, other folders here, uh, which is site templates. So I'm going to create site templates underneath templates folder, and this is a little bit monotonous because I'm going to create the whole structure as we go. So I'm going to create uh, my blog underneath my site template, so it's going to be the name of my blog. Uh, you could name it whatever really you prefer and there's a couple of lists underneath the blog so each blog has things like comments categories so uh, and those are lists in SharePoint and uh, they're going to be stored there there's also XML to define uh, the, the blog site structure so I'm going to go through lists first so this one has uh, categories um, categories list and the definition and supporting files in there it also has comments and actual posts. So this one's going to be in a post folder. And uh, obviously each of those will have its supporting structure and uh, actual views and other supporting pages. So we're just going to add those as existing items. 
So I'm going to add categories right now as they are in a regular blog. If we need to modify them, we'll modify them later. But right now, we'll just keep them out of the box. We're going to add comments as well. And uh, I'm going to step up and copy the comments. And we're going to have posts. And posts is something actually that we're going to be working on. I'm going to show you how you can extend posts to, uh, to, dis to show uh, a different view from a regular view that you've seen. So also there is uh, XML. And XML will actually define the site structure, what lists are going to be created, what uh, web parts are going to be added to the view. So I'm just going to copy that on at XML here. And uh, and last thing, I need to add the default page that's going to be used to create all of the pages from um, for this particular log template. So uh, one last thing that's left to do uh, for the basic installation is to have uh, this web temp defined so that uh, so that's so that my template is visible. So I'm just going to copy the uh, default web temp file uh, to my solution and modify it accordingly to for my needs. So I'm just going to go to this location, add web temp, add it to my solution, rename it to web temp dot my blog. And let's take a look at what's inside that and just remove things that we don't need and add things that we need. So, so this is uh, this is what's inside my web temp. I'm just going to remove, uh, basically you'll see various definitions for various configurations and templates. I'm going to remove all that and to save us some time I'm just going to copy uh, something that I had before here. And what we have here is we have the configuration which is an instance uh, or the type of the particular template. So each template uh, may have several different configurations. For instance something that's created by the system or something that's that's visible to the user to create and in this case um, I have my template uh, has uh, is called my blog and it has uh, this particular title this description this image URL and that's the only configuration I'm going to be using so also that has to correspond to my uh, own XML that we just added and own XML as you can see also has uh, the definition for various things and one of the things is configuration and my configuration ID has to match my name uh, and my configuration ID has to match with what I have in my uh, in my um, web temp has to match to my own at XML so in this case it's zero for ID and then the name needs to be changed uh, from basic as it's inside here to my block so I'm just gonna copy that and then the master URL and everything else is the same. As you can see in here, I have definition for def different lists that are going to be there and different features and the uh, site features, web features, as well as different modules and what web parts are going to be shown in those modules, which I'm going to be talking about in a moment. So I think we're done for the basic kind of installation to see, to, to basically to show you that we have, we're able to create a template. Um, out of um, we can create a site out of our own template that looks exactly like blog. So I'm gonna deploy this solution and uh, create a new um, site collection out of this uh, template that we have here inside my blog category it's called home. I'm gonna give it a basically uh, basic settings that it requires. Click OK and the site collection should be created. And there it is. I'm going to open that one. It should look exactly like regular blog like you see here in the main site collection. So one of the things that you'll notice is that uh, in my um, in my schema XML underneath my uh, in my um, posts. So each each of those lists as you can see is we're underneath lists right now in our solution and each of those lists have their own um, their own schema.xml and schema XML defines views and uh, uh, columns that are get, that are going to be um, that this list is going to uh, be represented off and uh, so right now you're looking at the schema XML for posts and we have different fields and uh, views and queries that are going to be defining our view and um, 
we can actually um, we can actually feed various inf or display various information on our on our page depending on the fields that we have available. So right now we have body uh, comments uh, published date, but we can add more fields in here. And there's also views, and you'll see that there's uh, several views here, and they all um, have their definition, but they also have uh, various IDs that are used throughout the site, and some of them. Uh, the views that are more um, more HTML type of views, so not just uh, not just a grid, but also uh, uh, also there's a, there's a HTML component to it. They inherit from this XSL style sheet that helps define uh, helps to define how the view a particular view is going to look like. So we're going to take a look at how we can modify modify the XSL style sheet and basically modify how our blog uh, list is going to be displayed. So I'm gonna switch to my ona.xml and you'll notice that in my posts module, because we're working with the posts right now, um, with a post list, list of uh, blog posting, uh, there is uh, there's reference to a view here. And this particular one is reference to base view seven. And it's just a XSL uh, web part XSL list viewable web part and um, it, it references uh, that particular view and just displays it as is and the reason why it doesn't why it doesn't look just like a regular SharePoint view is because of the XSL style sheet that helps transform that view to something uh, better looking and something that we can actually define so there's lots of reference to those views and we're gonna take a look at this base view 7 and take a look at What's the base view seven is all about? So base view seven is just like any other view would define columns and lists and uh, um, and queries that help build that view. But there's also on the top there's XSL link that references to blog.xsl. So blog.xsl where where is it in SharePoint? If you go to the template folder again and um, under our twelve under our fourteen hive, if we go to layouts under templates and layouts XSL you'll see several XSLs here not each view has its own XSL obviously because most views are pretty basic and they just inherit the main XSL but blog is pretty graphic and it has its own set of XSL defined here so what we're gonna do we're gonna actually import that in our solution and modify it to to basically fit our needs so I'm going to add the layouts mapped folder here to my solution and I'm going to add the new folder called XSL and I'm going to add existing file called blog.xsl. So after I add it I rename it to to my blog XSL and And now I just need to, uh, so this is my XSL. Pretty much there's uh, various templates that define various different views. So um, the view, for instance, on the, on the home page of the site is different from the view when I click on the actual blog post. And uh, so, so there's various views for comments, for actual comments list, and what's going to be displayed in them. So one of the views that I have here is uh, home page for the for the actual blog post so each time uh, you click on a blog post uh, there's uh, the, the blog po post looks in certain way and this particular template defines how that's gonna look like so you see that this template references some of the items that come from the view so you cannot even though you have certain items that are uh, that you know are available on the list certain columns you cannot uh, use them in your XSL unless they're coming or referenced in your view um, so you first need to need to have them accessible through the view. So in this case, there is a section here that's responsible for the title um, of the uh, of the uh, particular um, of the particular blog post. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reference rather than referencing generic blog.xsl, I'm going to reference my blog.xsl and and tell base view seven to use my blog.xsl. For uh, for defining its look and feel, and nothing's changed there. So pretty much it's exactly just like blog XSL for now. But I'm going to show you how how it affects my changes. 
once I change it. So as soon as I deploy it right away, you can see that it's been added to the solution. So I don't need to uh, do any recreation or anything there unless I'm, uh, I'm creating a new, new site. But uh, just for my testing, I just need to deploy it and um, it'll be accessible right away. But what I'm going to do, just because I changed my uh, schema.xml that defines my list, of course, I need to deploy that particular uh, definition again or recreate the site again because schema uh, schema.xml is applied only at the time of the creation of an object. So I'm going to create a new site collection here. And uh, here right away you'll see that uh, my blog, my blog, uh, there's a there's a tab here with my blog, and um, I'm just gonna create test two as my uh, as the name of my site site collection and use my blog template. I'm just gonna type in default uh, administration credentials, click OK and my site's created. It'll be created in a moment. There we go. So um, if I access that particular blog, uh, it'll look exactly the same. So uh, here it is, just looks default blog. And um, one of the things that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how I can modify what's going to happen once I uh, once I modify some of the XSL parts here. So I'm going to go to my um, my blog.xsl and uh, and give it uh, give it some give it some modifications. So in this case this particular area is right uh, where the title is so the title of the blog posting and it has some basic information uh, such as the name of the blog and uh, the link that will take you to the blog. Basically, it's constructed out of variables, so the item ID and, uh, and uh, the URL. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add my own link, which is this hard-coded link, and uh, that will just be taking users to some static sites, such as bing.com, for instance. And mind you, you could, uh, you could basically write more complex logic, which is, for instance, going to take uh, take the variable out of your view which represents the column and uh, shows some data or does some manipulation verifies if that data has some some value and then do something based on that value in our case we're just going to redirect users to uh, to bing.com pretty basic scenario uh, pretty basic approach in our scenario that just will demonstrate how you can actually modify it um, and make your templates look like you want them to look. So we're just going to deploy this particular um, solution, refresh our site. And since we modified the template only when you actually access the blog, not, not the home page of the site, but the home page of a blog, we actually need to go to the home page of a blog. And sure enough, here's our link as it was, um, as we've defined it. So there's a link. And if you hover over it, you'll see at the bottom of the browser that it takes us to bing.com. So uh, pretty much it's, it's pretty basic scenario and uh, not too much uh, functional that we, we could do from here, but uh, basically gives you an understanding that you could uh, modify the XSL and here's how you modify it to pretty much make a template, uh, your custom template look and feel and function exactly how you want it. Thanks a lot.